All right, Hotep, it says we are live and on the air. So, Hotep, um, greetings to everyone who will be watching the archives and who jumped in right away when they saw the notification on their uh, mobile device or whatever the case is. Um, so, ETM Hotep, so I want to welcome everyone. This is our Freestyle Friday session with the Seshu Ma'ani Meru Nature. And I am, or my name, Reni Wujao Meneb Erima'at. And I'll be running point for our session for today. Um, haven't been on the Freestyle Friday sessions uh, lately because I've been conducting a, a beginner's class with a group of uh, very good and bright uh, individuals who I have an opportunity to have three of them here uh, for this session, our Freestyle Fridays. But we've, we've been having class, classes on the same uh, day and time, so it's been in conflict. So I've been working with them to walk them through the beginner's introduction to uh, Meta Nature or Sesh Meta Nature. Uh, you said there's an echo. All right. Is everyone else hearing the echo? Am I, am I echoing? Um, I'm not hearing any echo from the inside. So okay. unless um, probably the person has the YouTube open as well. Oh, right. Yeah. If you have your, if you have your YouTube open as well, you, you're going to have to um, mute that one and keep this one. Okay. So, all right. So, yeah, so I've been, I've been MIA uh, up until now and we've basically came, come to the conclusion of the class. Um, we have one, one session left. Uh, and then the final exam for uh, for the group. Uh, but I felt feel that you know today, uh, in light of the NBA Finals uh, being aired tonight, and I know a lot of people are going to want to tune into that. So I figured we would do our Freestyle Fridays a little bit earlier, and um, and you know incorporate uh, the new group, uh, the class group, as well as members of the Session Mighty Meta Nature. All right. So we're just going to jump straight on in and uh, go over a particular uh, piece. Uh, but first, before I do, let's, I guess, let everyone introduce themselves. Again, my name is Wujau or Wujau Meneb Erima'at. Most people just refer to me as Wujau. And uh, I'll let, I guess everyone else can unmute their mic and just introduce yourself um, for our listeners. ETM Hotel, uh, Ren E. Sin, the Honorable Tony Rice. I welcome you with peace. My name is Tony Rice. ETM Hotel, Ren E. Jehudi Bakma'at. And I uh, hope everybody enjoyed the session. And uh, let's get it going. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, hey, Chair Motep. Uh, Rani Carlos. Um, I'm part of a beginner, beginner's uh, Seshu session. Uh, I'm proud to be here the first time. I'm part of a Freestyle Friday. It's a pleasure for me. And I hope everybody will enjoy the show. ETM head up, Ren E, Imike Raku, and um, welcome to Freestyle Friday. All right, Iker, all right. So that's all that we have on the panel, and uh, others may join in a little later. So uh, we can get started. Uh, but again, I just wanted to uh, uh, welcome um, the new members of the um, actual, well, not new members of the class, but uh, I guess members of the class, uh, the beginners class. So this is the first time um, for you all to come in on the Freestyle Friday. So I want to welcome you all here. And because this is your first time, you know how we have to do over here on Freestyle Fridays. We're going to have to, uh, you know, uh, what you call it? Um, what do they call it? When you take a pledge, um, you get initiated and, and you get hazed. So we have to haze you, you know, we have to haze you in on the Freestyle Friday. So I may pick on you all uh, this evening. So uh, it's all in fun. 
All right. So anyway, um, the picture we're going to go with, uh, let me share my screen. That. And you all let me know when you see it pop up. Here. Yes, we see it in here. Okay. Um, so this is the picture we're going to uh, deal with, and I don't want to give anything uh, away of it just yet because uh, what, what we do on Freestyle Fridays is that we uh, walk through the steps, what we call tep hesip, which is the correct method in order to um, transliterate and translate any inscriptions that we're dealing with. So the final outcome, the final goal is to is to have a very decent um, and well and sensible translation of whatever text that you're dealing with from ancient Kemet. All right. So and it's four steps that are involved. Um, and instead of me uh, going over those steps, uh, if any of you all would like to, um, you know, just list those four steps, any any of the uh, uh, members of the class. All right, uh, it's on Tony. Uh, the first step would be to notice the direction of the signs to make sure you know what direction you're reading into. You will make sure that you want the signs facing you when you're reading them. That's step one. The step uh, two would be to identify each sign to look up in the dictionary later. Uh, third step would be to group certain signs into words that you notice or you can actually search them later in the dictionary also. And the last step will be to come up with a sensible translation and to group everything together. Okay, Iker, excellent, excellent. Excellent, excellent. So that's, that's, those are the four steps. And those four steps, uh, to us, they're, they're four independent steps. But the more and more you put this to practice, the... Um, the independence of each of those steps will kind of uh, uh, evaporate because they'll, those steps will kind of run into each other. And some of the steps you won't even have to do um, or take time to do, I should say, because based on your memory and your familiarity with various different glyphs, <clears throat> independent glyphs, various different words uh, themselves and their meanings and things like that, you'll feel like you're skipping some of the steps. But but in essence, you're actually still performing the steps. It's just that you're doing it a whole lot faster. Um, so, you know, once you get used to what a word means, then obviously you won't have to look it up in the dictionary uh, for, for long. Same thing with the glyphs. The more glyphs that you memorize, the less um, the less you have to rely on a on a word list or a glyph a sign list for the glyphs. All right. So. What you put in is what you're going to get out. All right. So your speed is going to definitely be determined by how much studying and practice that you uh, put into this. All right. So, uh, all right. Now, before I move forward, <clears throat> I do want to um, give a shout out to those who are watching us now that I can see on the chat. Uh, so we have Monica, uh, Brother Michael, and uh, the sister Lisa. All right. So uh, Etim Hotep to you all. Uh, welcome and welcome um, uh, some of the new members, not new members of the Seshu, but um, popping in um, to the Hangout now uh, from the Seshu Mighty Metanetra. So I don't know if you all want to take some time uh, real quick to introduce yourself real quick. Hotep Abet, San Jehuti in the house. Checking out another Freestyle Friday, hoping to learn some new things. All right, Hotep. ETM Hotep, Rene Sean. Uh, thanks, everyone, for tuning in. And I uh, see we got a couple of people on the panel with us tonight. I appreciate San Tony, San Jehuti, and uh, Kalos. Peace, peace. All right. I'm not sure if uh, Satep's uh, mic is available, but I'll just... Uh, let everyone know that we have uh, Satep and, and Ra uh, with us also. So I'm not sure if you're, you're available to unmute your Hotel, mic. Yeah, I'm here, but I can barely hear. I'm driving right now. 
All right, well, we want, we want, you, we want, you, we want you to drive safe, brother. <laughs> All right, so. Yeah, I'll be up a little bit. I'm going to jump. Okay, then. All right. Um. All right, so yeah, so we have two Jehudis on the panel, so we have to kind of uh, distinguish them. So we have Jehudi Bak and then uh, Jehudi Ma'at. All right, so um, yeah, that's how we're going to have to uh, make the distinction. All right, <laughs> you know, otherwise we say Jehudi the first and Jehudi the second, you know. But all right, so hopefully everyone can see the picture that I have on the screen. And this is the picture we're going to deal with. So we've already covered the four steps. All right. So let's start with step one. And um, and any of the, uh, like I said, you know, I don't want to do all the talk, all the talking. So um, anyone that, who is a member of the of the class, the current class, if you want to jump in and do step one, uh, yeah. by yeah. all means, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, this is Brother Carlos. Um, for the, the, the first step, uh, um, we have to look to look into the, the sign and see uh, which di direction the, the, the face thing. And when I see the first the, the two first column, I have to, to, to say that my English is not my mother tongue. You know I'm calling from Paris. My French is my mother tongue. And uh, for the description, the description of the glyphs, I I don't have the the, the, the English word, um, but I try to describe the, the 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 glyph, and I hope everybody will understand what I'm trying to to say. All right. The first column, yeah, okay. Uh, the two first column, I can see, um, uh, you know, the, um, the 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 bird. The little, um, yeah, the little bird facing left. I can see the the hand, the G, the hand. Uh, at the yes, uh, facing the left. The the snake too, the horn viper. Um, I can go the second colon. I see the same thing. I see the two legs. Um. I'm a little bit confused because we have two other legs facing the other direction. I'm confused right there, but I can see the the uh, the, um, the the bird, the the M bird, too, and the horn viper left, and the uh, the duck. I don't know how you describe in English facing left too. I can say that the two first column uh the glyph of facing left so then we will read uh left left to right vertical okay excellent that's, that's an excellent excellent job um that's absolutely correct and um now we're gonna we're gonna get to we're gonna hopefully we'll have time to we'll get to uh these other legs right here that you mentioned so we'll we'll be able to get to that but that's um that's excellent. All right. Um, so basically, you you you've done step one and step two kind of combined because you told the direction and then you basically identified some of the glyphs, you know, uh, inadvertently because you you know you say I see the bird, you said the owl M, you see the uh, this bird the W, and the hand which D, you know, horn uh, viper F. My bad. My bad, because my this is because I'm a poor English. <laughs> oh no no no! I'm I'm no. It's not not something to uh to say that for. I'm I'm just saying that's good. That's that's what I meant earlier when I said that these four steps, although we we describe them as four independent steps, but they kind of run into each other anyway. You know, so it it's perfectly normal for us to do that. Um, but in, you know, when we're learning and we're describing it, we're describing it as four independent steps. And they have to, they go in, in those, that kind of order. Uh, so that was good. And um, anybody else? Oh, you had some more? Uh, or, I can go on if you want. All right. So, um, okay, just tell me what direction the other columns, because you, you mentioned these two columns, but what directions are the other three? 
facing. Yeah, the the, the other tree, the animal, uh, the glyph are facing uh, the the right. So then mm. we can we will read from right to left. Okay, all right, excellent. All right. Um, okay, so that's good. So basically, now let's go into step two a little bit more um, specific. So uh, now I always say that by the time someone sits down and makes attempts to transliterate and translate a, a text, there's certain things that certain you know skills that you should already have under your under your belt or under your hat, as some people say. And one of those things is the memorization of what we call the monoliterals or uniliterals, which are single uh, glyphs that represent a single consonant. And so by the time someone sits down and, and do what we're doing right now, everyone should have those 24 monoliterals memorized. So now I say that because when it comes to step two, step two is to identify individual glyphs. So the monoliterals, you should already know those, or we should all know those, so we can skip the monoliterals. So with skipping the monoliterals, um, does anybody have uh, any ideas about any of the other glyphs? And, and then I'll kind of follow you with the cursor. You just, uh, we don't have to do them all, uh, uh, not at all, but let's just identify a few more. So um, I open that to anybody on the panel. Okay, hotel, uh, son Tony. Right. And far as um, glyphs that I noticed that are not monoliterals, uh, I will start with that first column uh, to the left. And what I do notice is, first one I notice is will be the hotel sign. Okay. It's not a monoliteral. Also, the sedge plant is not a monoliteral. The first time, so I should have should have said that one first. Uh, also, I have the flag is not a monoliteral. I have the per sign or the enclosure. All right. Under the sign, I also have uh, the hand with something in it that makes it not a monoliteral. Um, so, yeah. I see a bird at the bottom, but I don't know which bird that is. Um, also, for the second column, I have uh, legs walking, fourth and the other way, both ways. I also have, uh, I believe that's a mountain glyph. The under the three strikes. Mm -hmm. Also, um, what else do I have? Uh, I think that's a, a hoe under that bird. Not the duck bird, but the second bird in the second column towards the bottom. Mm -hmm. And those are those are what I noticed off the top of in the first two columns. Okay, and that's good enough because we don't want to, um, we could continue, but we don't want to take up too much time. But that's good. Excellent. Um, it care. Uh, by the way, the word for excellent, if you hear, you know, some of us say Iker or Iker, it means excellent. So you'll hear us say Iker a lot. Um, tu, the word Tu means yes. Uh, you hear that a lot and so on. So some of these words we'll repeat a lot. We'll just let you all know what the, the translation is for those. Um, okay, but that was excellent. And um, so now that gives that that's an example, a demonstration of step two. So now step three involves um, taking those individual glyphs and then starting to recognize the patterns for entire words. So this involves pattern recognition and this takes time. Um, it takes practice and time. But now there's two things that will definitely help us with that. And number one is our knowledge that the our knowledge of the fact that in the ancient uh, language, Rani Kemet, the uh, most of the words, not all, but most of the words, um, are made up of 
two or three consonants. Okay, and that's just a helpful hint to allow us to know uh, where one word begins and another one, uh, the word ends and another one begins. That's one hint. A second one is our knowledge of the determinatives and to memorize the common determinatives. So those are the two things that help us, helps us with step three. All right, so utilizing those two helpful hints and then putting, putting practice in to just recognize four words, you know, as you come across them, then you'll, you'll be very, very good at step three. So um, at step three, does anybody on the panel, open up to anybody on the panel, um, are there any words that you, that anyone can recognize? And we don't have to do them all, but let's just um, um, identify some of them. Uh, yeah. But I can identify just a couple. Um, on the left side, I see, of course, we all are familiar with the uh, Hotep D. Nasu. Um, and I'm going to just skip over some stuff. Uh, we see the nature. And then, um, say words. So let me just bounce around. Uh, Mer in the second row. I'm just gonna go from give a couple in the second row down at the bottom. Mer. Uh, in the middle. Can I do the middle? Yeah, it, it's uh, any any column. Just identify some of them. Mm -hmm. I just words. Okay. In ka in and then sesh and then uh per a. Okay, you did a few words. You gotta isolate the words. <laughs> We're dealing with, with words. <laughs> okay, I'm done. He was doing phrases, but that's good. <laughs> yeah, cause see now you went into to phrases and things like that. So we want to um, but that's part of it too. Part of step three is you know you're gonna start recognizing common phrases, you know, prepositional phrases, and um, and things like that. And you have uh some words that are put together that become idioms in the language so that's going to come natural as you do this just like how you how you were um, doing just now so all right and that's a demonstration of step three and like i said i don't want to do too many uh for time's sake but okay so that's good and then step four would be to take what you recognized in those words and then to translate it and we're bringing basically it's translations is to bring um, a meaning from the source text over into the target language or the meaning from the source language over into the target language. So in our case, we're moving from Ronnie Kemet over to English. And in, transla in translating, there's rarely, probably never, a one-to-one -one correspondence that will perfectly match up 100 percent so when you're doing translations it it takes a little bit of um logic reasoning creativity skill uh you know all in one when we're doing translations and this is the reason why um you can look at the same source text and you can may buy a book written by one egyptologist and he'll translate it one way and the other another Egyptologist may translate it slightly different but the overall you know ballpark meaning should should kind of still be similar and then or the same all right it shouldn't be way off like you know you can't say um his uncle made a left turn and then another person translates it and says his uncle made a right turn you know, those are two totally different uh, directions, and then that, that would be a problem. But um, in translations, though, we have to be flexible with that, all right? And the example that I always give is the word um, hemet nesu, which some people will say queen, some people may say royal wife, some people may say wife of the king, and some people may say king's wife. So, you know, you can see how those are all all in the same thing, but not literally the, the exact same. All right, so that that's step four. Uh, that was, is what step four involves. 
So now let's um, go through for time's sake because uh, it's 852 and, you know, I wanted to kind of end at nine o'clock. Uh, so let's just go through column one on the left hand side here. And um, now because this these directions are split, notice that um, as the brother, as San Carlo said, the right two columns, actually the right three columns are facing to the right. And the first two columns on the left are facing to the left. So we have split directions that are going and we'll we'll see why. So let's read the top part of the left column and the top part of the right column, the top half of the right column, and the top half of the left, starting with the left. Does anybody have a, a transliteration? Now, when we when we transliterate, you're actually writing down the transliterations. But now when we pronounce these these words, we're using what's called classroom uh, pronunciations or Egyptology speak. And though these are all conventional and approximate pronunciations, they're never meant to be taken as as though the ancient Egyptians or the ancient Remich actually pronounced these words the exact same way we're pronouncing them. All right. But it doesn't interfere with us knowing what they mean. OK, so with that being said, um, just, can anybody give us the Egyptology speak for the first half of the left column? And then what's your translation? I can, I can, I can try on top okay. of my head. All right. Yeah, go, go for it. OK. Um, we have um, Hotep Ginesu. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I'm trying to give the uh, the transliteration first. Okay. Chabdi um, Nesut and Ipu Ken Ken Kenet Nature. It's a hood sign after Nature. Nature hood. Uh, per Per DF and uh, red, uh, I don't know the, the the rope the rope sign. Okay. And the, the fish, I think it's edge, if I remember. Uh, that's it. I don't I don't see what uh, under the fish. Okay. All right. Uh, that's good. That's really good, especially for top of the head. And that's what Freestyle Friday is all about, uh, coming off top of the head. Now, real quick, what what benefit um, what benefits us by doing Freestyle Fridays or, you know, if you do it personally um, by yourself, this goes for anybody, is that it will allow you to know how much progress you're making and what you what you need to work on. So it's like a self-evaluation thing. And plus, it's fun. You know, you get you get to test yourself. And I I recommend it to everybody, you know, whether we do it as a group or you do it, people do it on their own time. All right. So that's really, really good um, with what you came up with from the top of your head. All right. So um, let's stick with the same column. Does anybody have anything different or can expound or expand on, on what uh, Sun Carlo said? Yes, no, maybe so. No, all right. <laughs> I can still hear me, right? <laughs> yeah, we can still. My bad. Yeah, all right. yeah. No, no, no. Because sometimes <laughs> those awkward, those uh, the silence moment of like, all right, am I still connected? That's you know, when it gets silent, that's when you start looking at your at your uh at your cable mode and make sure the lights are still on. You're like, all right, <laughs> am I still connected to the internet? Okay, so, all right, so I'll just add add on to uh, what was already given. So I think you did a real excellent job. Um, yeah, you definitely did an excellent job. So just to give the, um, well, okay, let me, let's finish with what I was asking about. So we did the, the top, actually Carlos went down all the way down, but the, the top half, um, he gave that. So let's get the, the top half. I'm, I'm going to draw a square around it so you know where I'm talking about. As soon as I get my cursor back. Okay. 
So we're going to go with um, I say we just stop right here. So does anybody, if you could see what I squared off, um, if somebody can give that transliteration, Egyptology speak and translation. Yeah, uh, I'll go ahead and give a transliteration for the All right. right um, so we have Hotep Dinasut Sobet. And then I'm kind of I shouldn't be lost at this point, but um, I believe we have the uh, the circle and the vertical stroke. So I'm going to say that's wrong. Okay, good. See, and that's good. I'm glad that you you worked that out that way because that's what all of us have to do sometimes. You have to kind of just, um, sometimes it could be uh, speculative at first. And this 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 whole process is like a detective uh, investigation, like CSI. You come up to on, on a crime scene, you have to uh, take assessment of of what's what's that, what you can see, and then make inferences and 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 you know use your reasoning, logic, and all those kinds of things. So, um, like how you just said, you see a circle and and the single stroke. You're like, okay, I'm right now. I can speculate that that's raw. So I'm I'm gonna you know put a thumbtack on that and then you can sort it out as you go along. So that's good. That's excellent. All right. So, all right. So because of time wise, I, I just want to do those t two top halves and then maybe we can just go through. I will just give the transliteration and translation for the left, for the left side now. Okay. So now you did the transliteration. I guess on both of them, but notice now the reason why I wanted to do that is because uh, these are two different offerings because we all know that Hotep Dinasu is means an offering which the king gives. And so we see that twice. They're just facing two different directions. So this one, two, three, four, the first four glyphs on both of these left and right most columns are identical. So you say Hotep Dinasu and it's an offering which the king gives. But now notice that the deity are different. The deities are different. So this deity here is Enpu. Right there you have the reed leaf, water ripple, um, the stool, and the quail chick. And then over here we have Sobek Ra or Sebek Ra. So these are two different deities that are uh, being appeased with an offering that the king gives. All right, so we have Hotep Dinasu Enpu, Hotep Dinasu Sobek Ra. So these are two different deities, two different offerings. This will make, make it make sense why the inscriptions are facing in two different directions to separate the, these out a little bit. All right, so just wanted to kind of point that out and that's why, but now, so, Let's get let let's just do the first two columns on this on this offering the one that's associated with Enpu because I, I do want to get to these um, legs that some Carlos brought up and just for time's sake I'm just gonna give the um, I guess the transliteration Egyptology speak and then we can all together um, translate it and then we'll close out conclude all right so. Um, in the first, um, let's see, column, we can go with, um, well, so we have, we already said we have Hotep Dinasu, uh, then we have Enpu, then we have Kinti, let me go uh, highlight it as I go along, we have Kinti, and then we have uh, the way we look at it, what we see here is nature sa or nature se, but it's actually se nature, and we have honorific transposition going on here. And then we have df, then we have um, 
Ruj, and then Chat, M. And what that means, well, let me finish first because it's a continuation. Then we have Charet uh, Necher, and then we have An or Anin, and then Yut. For these two signs here, these are two different words, Anin and Yut. Then we have M, and we have Ra, uh, Satao, then we have Nin, then we have Khafes, Ba, M, Mer, F. And I'll just stop there so we can go and give a translation. So we have Hotep Dinasu Enpu, which is an offering which the king gives Enpu. And then Kinti Seh Necher, which is foremost of the divine booth. And this um, glyph here is the determinative for this booth to let you know that it's an enclosure. It's, it's a location. It's a, a place um, or something that you are dwelling. Then we have DF, which is um, that he may give. So this is the verb to give D or in a fuller sense, ready, which means to give or to grant or to allow. And then F, which is a personal pronoun for third person masculine. So it's he. So that he may give, and then ruj, and this word ruj means um, to make strong, to make vigorous, to make firm, um, you know, things like that, words that are associated with that, those concepts. And then we have the word chat, and the determinative is a mummy on the mummy's bed, on a bed, and that word is for a uh, body or corpse. A, a carcass, a dead, a dead body, and then we have the the owl for M, and then it continues on into this word karet nature, which is uh, the same thing. Uh, it really it means divine. Um, well, literally, it means something that's divine and under. But what it's talking about is a divine cemetery, and most people would just transliterate translate it as a necropolis. So it's a cemetery, but a divine cemetery. All right. And then we have anen, which means to come and you to go. So uh, some Carlos, the reason why the legs are facing in two different directions is one is coming and the other one is going. So um, like when we say shim, the word shim, sometimes you'll see the word shim when we say to go, it, it'll be legs going backwards to, to indicate that you're going away from something. And not coming. So we say et or e, it will be to come, and then we say shem to go. And some people may have translated transliterated this as as e or and then shem, but it's you know, if you look it up, you'll you'll see that this is um yut. Transliterated as I W T. Then we have um the owl, which is M, preposition M. Same as the one down here for M. And then we have a location here, all this together, Rastau. And this is near, this is a, um, a famous known uh, grave site, Rastau. And then um, the word Nin here, which is a word that negates something. It makes it into a negative or negation. And then chafes, which means to oppose or to be against something. And then ba, people translate translate that as soul. And then we have another m here. And then we have mer, which means to love, to want, to desire. And then another uh, third person masculine pronoun, f, which is he, mer f, he desires or he wants. And it is even also used to to refer to it, which is not a, a gender but it's third person, all right? So it wants, it desires, and so on and so forth, all right? So with all of this together, what this is saying is an offering which the king gives Anpu, who is foremost of the divine booth, that he may give or he may grant a strong corpse in the necropolis 
to come and go in Rostau, uh, that his soul or ba is not opposed in what it desires. And so, you know, that and it and it continues on, but uh for time's sake, like I said, I'll just stop there at the um at the bottom of column two. So that should make sense. So basically it's it's an offering that the king gives and the deity involved is Enpu. And Enpu's epithet is that Enpu is foremost of the divine booth. This particular divine booth is the embalming area that um that Enpu is is presides over. And once you understand a lot of the different uh, other texts, funerary texts, you'll see Enpu shows up a lot and he's involved with the embalming process in some form or fashion. So this, this is an offering towards Enpu so that he may grant. So we have DF so that he may grant and then a vigorous or strong corpse. Because remember in ancient Kemet, the mummification process, one of the purposes for that process was to preserve a well-preserved corpse. So this is saying so that Enpu himself, as the embalmer, the governor or the deity over embalming, grants or allows or gives a very uh, um, preserved, a well-preserved corpse. So it's saying give, give, you know, grant a well-preserved corpse in the cemetery, necropolis here, Karet Netra, which is the divine cemetery. And allow it, basically allow it also to come and go in this location, this cemetery, Rustau, which is actually Ra, which is the word for mouth, and uh, Satao. And they say that it basically translates as um, a secret place. So it's the mouth or the opening. So basically to come and go through the doors, the doorway to all of this, these um, locations. All right. And then so that the soul, the person's soul is not opposed. So we have the negation, we have in or nin. And then so nin kafes, uh, kafes, which is um, to not oppose the ba in what it desires. So basically let, let the ba let the ba do what it wants. And then it concludes, and I'll just I know we didn't uh, give the transliteration for this one, but we have in kani sesh perhej, and then in neb tawi, and then neb sin, macheru. So from here down here, we have in kani, which is for the ka of. And then the person's titles, which is the sesh, and perhej, which means um, a treasurer, a scribe of the treasury, I should say, because you got perhej, hej meaning silver. All right, hej literally means to be bright or white, but it's a word for um, a bright metal, which is silver, and and you know that's a way of saying money back then. So this is why it's interpreted as treasury. So he's the scribe of the treasury of the Lord of the two lands, Neb Tawi. And then we have his name, Neb Sin. And then the fact that he's true of voice or justified, Makheru. All right. And um, and to continue on just real quick, I might, we might as well. Uh, then we have uh, Makheru, so uh, Neb Sin, who is justified. Then we have Senet F. Now the word senet, we usually translate that if I say senet emiket, sister emiket. But the word senet, the word sin means two. And it also means your double, your twin. And by extension, it means your companion. So this is why in ancient um, Kemeti text, you'll see a person's wife referred to as their sister. But people who will translate it as sister, but it's not really their sister, it's their companion, it's their double, it's their twin, uh, you know, not a literal twin out of the same mother and father, but their companion, they're, it's their, their um, splitting, you know, in their sojourn in life, you know, they're married or whatever the case is. So you'll see that a lot. So this is not to be taken as, as this person's literal sis sister, so this is a companion. So it says Sunet F, his companion, and then, uh, Marit F, 
his beloved. So together we can say his beloved companion. And then Nebet Per, which is mistress of the house, which is her epithet there. And then her name, Nebet Ta. And then Ma'at Keru. So we know she's a female because we have Ma'at instead of up here, we had just Ma'a. So we have Ma'at Keru, justified. All right. So, and that's the first half. Now, th this text will appear to, to go with the, the offering on the right hand side, but it can actually go with both. It, it can actually go with uh, either offering. And so the safest thing to do would be to read the middle, the middle column with the right, the left offering and with the right offering. That way you cover all your bases. So any questions about that? Or anything anybody want to add? Questions, comments? Hey, I'd like to add, um, if we were to read this, wouldn't we start from the very top with the two Wajet, uh, the Chanu and the, uh, the water and jar stand at the top? Yes. Um, in terms of reading it, or you 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 can you can uh, you know analyze that and and come away with the translation as well. So yes, um, that's not a must. You start because um, let me get back on my cursor right here. That would be logically where you would start because it's it's at the top, so you would start up here. So that's why I say yes. So you have the two eyes, then you have the shinu, you have the three water ripples representing water, and then you have the um, a container here. I have a question. I'm sorry. Two questions. Okay, go ahead. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. What 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 what, what is what under is the the bar sign? Is it a uh, Red loaf or something? Not uh, the, 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 the second the column. column. Okay, where? Let me um here. Yeah. So yeah. What is on the? I see a little sign on the 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 the, the bar sign. Oh, you mean here in the? Okay, no, that's not a that's not a yeah. bread loaf. Okay, I see what you're saying. No, that's not a bread loaf. You have a single stroke behind it. And then in front of it, you have you, that's not the the uh, bread loaf. That is, matter of fact, um, I don't want to say it's a container, but it's a it's a uh, uh, flame. It looks like the, the <sighs> container for the flame. It's not. Uh, maybe if I can zoom in, I don't know if it's gonna clear it up, but it's not very uh, preserved or carved where you can actually tell exactly what it is. Oh yeah, I see. It's a flame. It's the bar flame. It's a right. flame. Mm -hmm. The ball with smoke. Yes. Ah, okay. Do I, do I, now, do I? now, because this is Freestyle Friday, you know, we're just going from from the top of our head. But if you were to look this up, you know, it it would be real clear to you uh, what it is. Mm -hmm. my, my my second question is, um, when you finished the second column. Mm -hmm. Third one, is that correct? After the second column, should we not be uh, um, go to the 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 the, the last column? You know, after the second column, we we go to the the, the fifth column. No, um, I, I don't know if, if, if my question is clear. No, no, I understand your question. No, this is what I was saying. The, okay, these are two offering formulas. And um, the offering formula is structured a specific way. Now, the offering formulas for multiple people all around uh, Kemet, there's a whole bunch of offering formulas that, you know, are preserved and that we see on all these different artifacts. And they can differ in in the actual text, the uh, specifics of the text, but they're all structured the same. It always starts off with the declaration of the offering itself. Then there's a deity associated with it. 
and then there's the act of granting or giving and then the items that are given or the request that's given and then you have always have the beneficiary of the offering so knowing that that structure is static there's no way of getting around it though that, stru that structure is immutable with these offering formulas so knowing that then you'll know that when you read the offering on the left hand side you have to include this middle column why because the middle column is the column of beneficiaries so it's who it's who this is being granted on behalf of because if if we were just to read the first two columns then we don't know who <laughs> we won't know who the offering is on behalf of it, it it doesn't say you know who it's on behalf of you don't get that to the third column so th this is why i say that this middle column is to be read with the the offering from the right and the offering from the left yeah. yep so we have in kani you know for the ka of and and so that's that's that tells us that okay this offering is being invoked for this particular person and 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 in this case it's two people it's a uh, i'm assuming their husband and wife uh, so we have nebsin and then nebet ta those are the two people uh, i'm a little bit confused because um if i read the 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 the, the three first column together uh -huh. I have a little problem because the third column doesn't face the same direction that the the the, the two first columns. Um, yeah. I'm a little bit confused. I that after the the bottom of the second column, we mm -hmm. go straight to the 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 hotel dinesu at the the last column, and and we go from from there to the middle column. I. I, I was thinking that that's the way to go, but now I'm a little bit confused. Okay. Okay. So the only way you're not going to be confused is like in in time that you uh, become familiar familiar with more of these examples like this, you'll understand that number one, the preferred direction of writing is from right to left. So whenever a scribe is making something symmetrical, uh, the middle column is most likely going to be facing to the right, even though it's meant to be read symmetrically, or in that case twice. So because you can't because you can't put the you can't put the glyphs straight forward, you know. So they have to they have to make a choice: should I face it to the left or should I face it to the right? Even though it should be read twice. So okay. it just so happens, you know what I'm saying? So, so now this is where the knowledge of how the offering formulas are structured comes into play to help out as, as well. So that's, that's why I said what I said at first, where that you have the declaration, which is the Hotep Di Nasu, then you always have the deity and, and or some epithets, and then you'll have what they grant or what's being requested, and then a whole list of things, you know, um, DF, uh Keru, T Henket, Aped, Seshman Ket, you know, all the different items, food items, but but in this case there's no food involved. Uh they, they they're just asking for a very good burial and and you know a strong body, you know, and stuff like that. So that's the next section. And then after the list of things, then you always have the beneficiary themselves. So so who who is this for? And it always begins with inkani, and a lot of times we'll say inkani imaku, which is the uh, worthy one, he who is worthy. So inkani imaku aku makeru is what we say on the generic one that we always start off with, but in this case we say inkani, and then it just goes into his titles and his name. So knowing that structure, knowing that structure, we know that okay, this is to be read with that offering, and then this offering I, I'm also to read it again. So, so yeah, it's just it's, yeah, it's just something that you'll you'll learn uh, about and more you come come across these like this. Now, not all of them are like this at all, but but you know when you do, you'll be you'll say, oh, okay, man, all right, it makes sense. But but now the reason why they faced it to the right and not to the left is because the preferred way, the 
preference is from right to left. This is why in the hieratic, um, in the hieratic rendition of the writing system, it's almost always right to left because that was the preferred direction. Okay, so just you know, just keep that in mind also. So all of these little things, you know, will help you out. So hope, hopefully that uh, answered that. And hopefully everybody followed online. Let me just check online. Any, any anything in the chat? We have. Uh, we okay. All right. We have. Um, 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 yeah. Were there any other questions uh, from the panel or or in the chat? Because I I haven't been looking at the chat. I just wanted to add real quick. Um, since you're discussing the structure, um, because the first time when I was looking at the the stele, I was um, on the first column on the on the right side, where you have Ra and then you have Neb. So um, regarding the structure, I, th uh, I think that, that would also be beneficial in stuff like that where, um, let's say, for example, you were um, not freestyling, but looking at the word or looking in a dictionary and you could find um, the, the word Raneb as well. And that could actually mean something else like um, all day or every day. But um, with understanding the structure, that would actually be more helpful because then you would know, um, you know, what it um, follows um, what it in a zoo. So then you have the deity. And then you have the epithet after that, so then it won't be so. You, that way, you'd be able to kind of um, exclude um, some other um, entries that you might find. So, so, just wanted to add that, that the structure is very important to understand. Okay. Yes, that's an excellent point, and 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 um, and that will get you by. Like it, it will you know eliminate the confusion by understanding that structure. And this is why you know there's certain things you're just gonna pick up on. Like, for example, whenever you see Makeru, uh, let me just highlight that. Whenever you see Makeru, um, nine out of ten times, if not all ten times, what comes before that is someone's name. You know, so I'm just giving an example of like these hints that you'll that you'll just grow to learn. And so. If you're looking for a person's name, then you just look for Makeru. You know, you scan this, you say, okay, I see Makeru right here. So right before it, this must be a person's name. And we, and then with the names, we know names are kind of difficult to translate. But as long as you know it, it, it is a name, then you'll be good to go. Now, his name, Neb Sin, simply means their master or the master of them. So, you know, or their Lord or the, the Lord of them. That's what his name actually means. Um, so his is pretty easy to know what it means. Um, and then even the other one, we have Ma'at Keru at the bottom. And so we know right before that is someone's name. So we have Nebet Ta, which means mistress of the land. And that's her name. So th those two names are pretty easy. All right, so. All right, All right Sable. All right, Sable. Mm -hmm. I got this on my mind, so I got to ask this question. Uh, the far right column, right under Sabet. Okay, Freestyle Friday, without my book and all that, what keeps me from thinking under Sabet that, that is the House of Rock? Okay, because of what uh, Senate Emiket said, once you understand the structure of, of an offering formula, which is what this is, they they all have the same structure, although the content uh, may differ. So remember the the way that the structure is, it's always starts off with the declaration or the invocation itself. So we are saying Hotep Dinasu. That's Two. always that's always going to be first, and then what always comes after that is going to be a deity, and then after the deity. It may or may not, but in most cases, it will have the epithets of that particular deity. So what will prevent you from saying um, the house of Ra is that that wouldn't make sense for for an offering for a, a deity. You, you, you understand what I'm saying? So you would have to you have to scan your mind or whatever for the deities that are usually given offerings. And there's, there's not that many deities are given offerings. This, this is actually a good. Um, artifact here because most of the time most offering formulas are given to either Enpu or Wasir and that's the one we always say Hotep Dinasu Wasir Neb Jedu so we know Wasir is, is a is a one that all these offerings go to we know Enpu is one 
those are the two main ones. But this particular one, we have Sobek Ra. And then sometimes we may see, uh, I believe, Geb on rare occasions. Um, and I believe someone else. But there's not too many deities that these offerings are are um, uh, de de are dealing with. Okay, so even if this was brand new to you, you just know that, okay, it has to be a deity. Man, let me look up a deity. I don't know a deity named House of Ra. <laughs> you know, so so those kind of clues that will help you out. Yeah, yeah I get it. I, get it man. I was just asking, you know, because if you just scan and scan without knowing what it takes to break down the offering formula, I would think I'd grip the word right there. Yeah. Now, even even if you did that at first, because that that's a that's an innocent error that's that's a valid error that that anybody can make so let's just say you did that the house of ra and then you keep going you say okay su and then you have um su nu and then you have df whatever by the time that you're finished you you would most likely self-correct you would correct yourself because then you you'll start to narrow it down and make it make more sense and fine-tune what you have so by the time you're done you would have probably changed uh hut ra the house of Ra, you know, on your own. So, you know, it, that, that's the good thing about being flexible and, and being um, okay to correct yourself. And this is why doing this kind of stuff, this is why, you know, it, it takes a person that has to be humble. It takes a person that has to be, has to know that mistakes can, can and will be made and that you can self-correct and you have to be open-minded and flexible. Because if, if people are too rigid, then you can be like, uh, it, it's the house of Ra. It has to be the house of Ra something. Let me look. And then you'll be stubborn with yourself. And then, you know, you will kind of um, do it to yourself. You and, you know, you won't be a good friend to yourself doing that. Uh, do our first thing. I mean, you know, we all do it. We all do it. I mean, so we just got to be flexible. Um, yeah. So, but that's good. Those, all these are good questions and things. So I hope, hopefully all of that is understood hope you understand about the sinet uh although we translate that as sister most of the time but it can also mean companion um you know the better half like today we say you know husband and wife will say oh my wife is my better half and you know women will say oh my husband is my better half you know things like that um so we can see what this can mean and stuff like that so um all right so it's 9 30 uh kind of wanted to stop at nine we went half an hour over but uh real quick in the chat were there any questions in the chat nah man i don't think nobody watching that game you say you don't think anybody watching the game <laughs> i'm not i'm not yeah what so you're everybody <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so all right so anybody got anything to add you know because hey listen don't 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 have me switch over to mc iron lung now because because i will become okay, the nba okay. i will become the nba finals <laughs> okay, you switch to MC Allen, i just wanted i just made a quick note yeah it's nothing big but uh, you can see the different um uh, glyphs used for the word mare so i thought that was kind of neat you know that the scribes yeah, are flexible yeah. enough to do that, you know, on the second column from the right and then the middle column. Okay, say that one more time. Uh, the word mer, there was on the second column at the bottom, mer f, and okay. then in the middle column we have, uh, on the second column, the uh, glyph, um, I think it's the ho, and then on the, in the middle column is, um, I think the canal side, so, you know, just wanted to make note of that. No. Oh, I got you. Right. All right. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Right before you switch to MC Islands. All right. No, that's good. All right. So this is a good piece. Now, um, this picture, I have to say, was posted in our Facebook group. So anybody watching this now or come across uh, the video in the archive, please join our Facebook group. It's the same name, Seshu Ma'ani Meadow Nature. And we have a lot of good conversation in there. We um, people share pictures and do what we're doing now, Freestyle Friday. But they chime in on Facebook, and, um, and you know they give it a shot. 
they, you know, later on we look look things up, we translate it, and and we just move on. So if you're not already a member of the group, please join the group, and you know, we we'll, we we'll, uh, love to have you. And but this particular picture was posted in the group. I'm trying to go to it right now so I can give credit to the person who posted it. It's from a brother, um, Quadro, uh, and I may be mispronouncing his name, so please forgive me. But um, Quadro. Uh, Asera Afori. All right. So the brother posted it and um, he asked for help to translate it. So we kind of grabbed it for tonight and we kind of made comments on the picture already inside the group. All right. So I think that went off uh, went pretty well. All right. OK. So and also. Um, if you're watching, if you're watching the watch, if you're watching this live right now. Uh, very that's really good but please subscribe and make sure you click on the bell so you can be notified because sometimes we'll go we'll we will go live or we'll schedule a live event and we definitely want you to be notified because sometimes you know you know sometimes we will go live based on the conversations that take place on social media and so you know we may go live right there on the spot out the clear blue sky but we give people a little heads up. We try to give people a little heads up. So, so please uh, subscribe to the channel and pass the word, spread the word. If you think anybody's interested in the uh, language and writing systems of Kemet, then, you know, give, a, give us a recommendation. Recommend them to um, subscribe to our channel, join the Facebook group, and also go to the website, uh, medunetcher.com, which is MDW hyphen ntr.com and you know browse through the blogs the articles we have um and actually we need to add on to the website because uh what we were doing in the past past is that we'll take these freestyle fridays and then we'll post it on the website in its full completion because a lot of times on freestyle fridays we won't have time to go through the whole uh piece or picture and because it's freestyle friday we we may not uh, know everything about the artifact or the, the entire translation. So um, by the time it reaches the website, we would have put, you know, all of the effort into it and, and come to a complete conclusion, you know. All right. So that's the difference with that. All right. And. Um, all right. So, I mean, you know, outside of that, you know, like I said, I don't, you know, I, I don't want to go into the phone booth and, and switch, switch clothes into MC Iron Lung and, and, uh, and then have at it. But uh, before we close though, we have, we have, again, we have new members of, uh, well, actually students um, on a beginner's level of Sesh Metal Nature. All right. And that's why, like I said, I've been MIA because I've been working with um, uh, the group. And so, inviting him he here tonight hopefully that's a good experience but i want to open the floor for any of you all to kind of um express your experience with the class or even going through what we just get, went through just now you know maybe take a little bit of time to uh, go through that so any of you all who are, who are in the um class group you know have at it mike is yours all right Randy, the honorable tony rice i just got a quick statement uh, I urge everybody to actually sign up for the course, the online interactive course. Uh, it it's made my speed better. Uh, being around other people who like what you like and, and have the same drive to, you know, translate and transliterate is better than just me being at home trying to read the book myself and watching it on Wednesday and Fridays. That can only go so far. So just to sum it up, I, I just wish that everybody would move forward and actually sign up for the classes and, you know, really get involved for real. All right. Anybody else have any, um, any words? Hotep, Jedi Mall, um, really enjoyed the class. Um, I felt, felt kind of behind. And so I'm, I'm looking forward to taking it all over again. Uh, I seem to be it's going to be back in the the beginning and really, really get it a second time. So I'm kind of the slow one of the ball. 
much, but that was something that is fascinating. I really appreciate the scientific method and that uh, there's no pseudoscience in this. This is real science, and uh, would you appreciate your professionalism, and I, I pr appreciate listening in on, on the sessions, uh, both the ones that are pre-recorded and the live ones, and uh, I'm, I'm definitely spreading the word in my community. And I hope to find like a study buddy, somebody that's willing to be local that could uh, that could get this information, uh, you know, and apply in the class as well. And then uh, we could work together uh, between in the meantime and between time, because I got so much things going on. It takes a little bit of time for me to really absorb things. So. You know, again, I've, I've been a little slow with 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 get with uh, downloading everything and learning everything, but I got the book. I got the finally got the uh, flashcards, and I'm committed to continuing to listen and learn and uh, be a part of this this beautiful community. All right, that was uh, excellent. I appreciate those words, and um and and you know the fact that you feel that you know you kind of uh, uh uh fell behind a little bit that's not a problem because you know I'm, I'm available you know we have the inbox so you can feel free to inbox me and i will be starting a new class uh group uh, basically as asap asap lee <laughs> you know as soon as possible um as soon as i get three or more people i usually wait till i get three or more people involved or um interested then i'll actually start the class uh so yeah if you want to uh take it a second time around then that's no problem but i'm also you know always available so you can inbox me um you know and whatnot but like you said having a study buddy and ha studying with a group of people is way more um effective you know i find that to be effective all my life and and that's what people i just see it so that's um that's really really good and um how about any, anybody else? Uh, matter of fact, let me stop sharing the screen here. Yeah, I hope that this is uh, Brother Carlos. Um, I really, I really enjoyed this experience. I was a little bit nervous because <laughs> I know that this is the um, level. I, I didn't. I, I, I don't think that we will be able to participate and to go and I'm very happy for the experience and that motivates me to um, a lot to, to, to do more effort to better myself and uh, and uh, like, like my brother my brothers said uh, I could sign all all that being said and being part of uh, the more advanced level it's motivation to 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 do more 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 work and to, to better myself i i really appreciate the first friday and uh, i think it's a it's a very 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 great thing for our community to keep um, to keep uh, going to keep uh, evolving to keep the, this group very great thing for our global African community. And thank you to uh, Jiao for that. All right, well, Dua for, the, for those words. Uh, and like I said, in the class, um, for you in particular, I know that you will be a, a valuable asset in the upcoming projects that are um, going on because one, as you said, your, your mother tongue is, um, or one of your, um mother tongues is french and that a lot of african scholarship is published in french so you you already have a, a head start uh above you know beyond a lot of us who are studying so you know you can open up a text like um uh, shake out the geop uh jean claude mm -hmm. and Boli, and you yep, can actually yep. just dive right in and read Whereas we have to go to Google Translate, we have to take a course in French, and this and that. So, so your enthusiasm to learn this, along with the languages that you already know, you're going to be a value, a valuable asset. And so, you know, I, I already let you know that, but um, just letting the public know that. 
So, you know, I, I'm definitely going to continue to encourage you to, to keep pushing forward, 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 because I can see that there's a lot to be learned from you. Like as, as you're learning this, you know, then I know later on I'll be learning. Uh, it'll be in reverse. I'll be learning some things from you. So um, I welcome that. You know, each one teach one. We, we learn from each other. So that's going to be a very, very good thing. Definitely. So, um, and, and then the fact that you, you live in, uh, Fr uh, France, Paris, and that you, you, you coming in, um, with the hour, the time difference. Like, I think it's, it's five hours, like it's nine forty two here. And just the fact that you're able to endure that, uh, is really, really good. So yeah, I appreciate all of that stuff. So that's, that's excellent. Um, but it, yeah, does anybody else have any, anything to close, you know? Cause I, I, hey, look, listen, MC Iron Lung is like knocking at the door, <laughs> about to start a whole nother conversation, you know. Cause some, nah, nah, somebody, somebody nah, mentioned nah, some, 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 somebody mentioned science versus pseudoscience, and you, and you know that that's like a hot topic right now. Science versus pseudoscience. So, you know, we've been we've been dealing with some pseudo issues, you know, a lot lately, and we're going to continue to do so. So, you know. Um, uh, you know, anyway, but we have, um, you know, so now uh, also this is a good time for me to uh, say this as well, is that uh, as the Seshu Ma'ani Meta Nature, as the as the the group itself, we have open membership. So people who are interested in joining the group can do so. And, you know, we have a very minimal requirements. Uh, that we post on the website and it's posted inside the Facebook group. But the gist of it is that um, one, you have to show and demonstrate suitable proficiency in the language and writing system on a beginner's level. So either people take the course with me and pass the course, then that satisfies that requirement. Or if people have taken a course through someone else, um, we have ex other excellent teachers out there, such as Dr. Riketi Amin, um, Anthony, I mean, um, what's it, uh, um, Bonochi Montgomery out there in, in Detroit, um, and, and, and others, you know, uh, that also teach, those are people I know that teach in online, I have online courses. Um, so if people take, have taken those courses and are interested, then all that we require in, in th those cases is that, um, they will actually take a um, proficiency exam just so that we can know where they're proficient at, you know, that they have a basic or beginner's level proficiency. You know, they don't have to take the course. Or in the other case, you have people who study on their own. They just, they read a book and they pick up, they practice and they learn and they, they know it. And likewise, they would have to take a proficiency exam so that we'll know that they are on, uh, they are competent on a beginner's level. So that's one requirement. And another requirement is a uh, good character or the um, the uh, desire to the the actual, you know, I should say great desire to have good character because, you know, we all have character flaws. You know, we all are a work in progress. So we don't want to make it seem like we're the perfect bougie group of people that don't have any character flaws. But the whole point of that requirement is that we emphasize good character. And what comes with it that's a that's a very african um tenet among pretty much all the initiation systems uh you know in indigenous cultures and, and especially on the continent of africa is that you build good character so that's the main thing we emphasize that we emphasize um good character and thirdly the requirement is you can't be lazy because we're not we're not just a clique where, you know, we just want to be a group and, and and have people just tag along just to just for the sake of we actually do work. We actually get busy. We have projects that we want to um, knock out and um, and plan for in the future. And the more people we have involved, the, the better equipped we are to to tackle these different projects. You know, we want to translate whole text, you know, from scratch. You know, like the example, a uh, perfect example is the uh, Runu Puretnam Heru uh, of Ani, which is the so-called Book of the Dead of Ani. You know, there's there's uh, versions of translations out there, but we should be able to translate it from scratch based on our knowledge and um, of the language 
and of the culture and from an African perspective. And it may turn out to be uh, very close to what's already out there. It may not. But the fact that we do it, that that would be a project. I'm just giving that as an example. And it's a whole, a whole bunch of things that we can do, you know. And there's a reason why we focus on the language as the seshu. Because, as I always say, language is the DNA of culture. And for anybody to understand a culture that you have not been brought up in, your mother culture, in order for you to understand that culture, you have to do it by way of the language. Because culture is solidified or cemented or it's, it's, it's crystallized within the language of the people that the culture that, that who are, are of the culture, you know, if there's like an, an aquarium, you know, the culture would be the water and the people would be the fish in, in the water. So in order to understand the culture, you have to, you have to, it's expressed by the language for other people. And so uh, this process acts or functioned as a doorway or gateway. And in our case, Kemet. So the language or what we're doing is the doorway to Kemet. You can't get to Kemet or to really understand Kemet without understanding the language because you, you're not going to be able to know what was on the minds of the people in Kemet without knowing their language. You know, so I mean, it's real, a real simple formula. So that's, that's, you know, why it's so important to learn the language and why we take it, um, why we take it as serious as, as we do, you know? So, um, anyway, yeah, I guess we can go until 10 o'clock, but while, while I have this on the, on the screen, uh, this is our basic curriculum. This is a, a overview of our curriculum within the Seshu Mani Meta uh, group. All right. We have three levels and these levels are, are, um, parallel to the three seasons that were known and used in Kemet. You have the season of Akhet, the season of Paret. Oh, you said it's blurry? Okay, I don't know if it's, uh, let me see, let me check. Okay. No, I can it up. It's clear. Okay. It's blurry on my end. I don't, it's not coming in crystal clear. Okay, so hopefully. Could it be my setting? It, it may be, um, it may be, I don't, I don't know. Um, hopefully it's clear enough for people to see on, on the YouTube. I'm, I'm looking at it on the, on the YouTube and it's, it should be clear enough for them. Okay. On the hang, cause on the hangouts. Okay. So, uh, but what's on the screen, what we have here are the three levels. And like I said, it, it corresponds to the, um, three seasons. You have Aket, Peret, and Shemu. And the same way that these seasons uh, roll after one another, and it's just a, a logical flow of, of the Nile swelling up, we call it the flood, and then when the Nile, um, uh, the swelling stops and, it, and the water goes back down, what's left is a very, very fertile area. And then we enter into the season of Peret, which is to seed and to grow. So the seeding and the growth takes place. And then the season of Shemu, which is um, the season of harvesting. So basically, it's like you reap what you sow type of situation. So level one corresponds to the flood. Level two corresponds to the seeding and growth. And level three is the reaping, the harvesting. And so within each of those levels, we have three stages. And so we've been focusing on level one for, for quite a while. And level one consists of stage one, which is the um, the introduction, basically to uh, to the language. It's the foundation mm -hmm. in the language and the writing system, and that's what we've been dealing with, uh, beginners level. Stage two will deal with the grammar of the language and penmanship, and then stage three within level one is the foundation or the beginners level of historical comparative linguistics because you have to have some kind of knowledge of linguistics as a whole as well. All right. So that is level one. And then level two, we have three stages. Stage one will be the recovery of the historical pronunciations. Remember earlier, I said that the way we pronounce these words, when we say Hotep Dinasu, Wasir Neb Jadu, Netra Ad Neb Abju, all these different words that we say are based on conventional pronunciations. 
So in level two, we will be seeking to recover the historical pronunciations by using the skills of or the tools of historical comparative linguistics. All right. And then, you know, um, and everything that's involved with that. Stage two of level two is to develop speech communities, which is which is a logical step after recovering of the of the historical pronunciations. Obviously, now now if we recover the historical pronunciations, we can now begin to speak to one another in a in a more uh, with more confidence in the, those pronunciations, and we could develop speech communities. So that's stage two. Stage three of level two is to recover the re realities behind the figurative speech. Now, with that level, this is the beginning of the more intense initiatic aspect of things because um, Africans, or a lot of indigenous cultures, period, use the technology of figurative speech. And I call it a technology because, um, you know, it's better to look at it that way because it, it was a, a means to an end based on what was available to the people at the time. You know, because remember, in ancient times, they didn't have writing systems. They didn't have books. They didn't have libraries, um, you know, flash drives and things like that. So if we really think about it, you have to ask yourself, how did any one individual memorize the definitions of the words that they used within their language, let alone the meanings of individual words, but how about stories? How about scientific data? How about medical data? How about just everyday living communications and, and how to communicate to one another where there's no dictionaries? So they had to, to, to create a way to keep it in the memory, the, the, the collective memory of the people. So they, they used a form of figurative expressions and, and group them together into, into narr narratives that we call myth. And so the myth is one thing, and then the reality that the myth stands for is another. So we're dealing with metaphor and the reality behind the metaphor, or we're dealing with symbolism and the, and and the reality of what the symbol really stands in for. So that's the start of stage three of level two. And then level three is, is you know, you're going, you're going hard by applying, utilizing, and executing all of the, uh, the previous things. All right. So that's basically um, what this curriculum is describing. So I'm just going over this for people to understand. This is what we're about, the Seshu Mani Meta Nature. We're not just uh, an internet click of people, you know, just for the sake of and, 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 and whatnot. We actually have a plan, a blueprint, a curriculum, and a sensible one, a logical one, a reasonable one, and one that can actually be achieved and that we are actually achieving. You know, we're in the baby stages. We're at the bottom of the pyramid, um, but we're going to continue to climb up. And as we climb, then it's going to be a revolving thing because new people will be able to start at the bottom and work their way up as well. All right. So. Uh, that's that, you know, and we got five more minutes. So anybody got anything to, to add? I believe, yeah, um, yeah Judy. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did want to add, uh, I did a presentation a while back and, um, and, um, it was at the church of, church of my girlfriend at the time. And, uh, we, since gone through some ups and downs in the relationship. And um, I get a lot of people asking, why do I focus on following Kimmich and learning hieroglyphs and the whole nine? Um, and I just want to say that there's an example that we can follow. If you really look at the evidence of what's been left behind and given to us. I mean, just the, the picture that we kind of transliterated and translated a little bit tonight, tonight. we can look at that text and kind of, there's an example for us to follow. You can show that text to a child who's five years old, to your grandmother who's, you know, older than 55 or whatever. Anyone can look at these texts 
and we can pretty much, you know, follow what's in the offering formulas. You know, we can follow what's been left behind, like the fact that they were able to engrave in the stone and different things like that is through the methodology that's been broken down. That they were able to achieve these, you know, these great things. Um, and so the oldest instructions in the world are left to us to have good character. And, you know, from my girlfriend to friends to people who still inbox me and they attack me and they friend me and unfriend me from going on my page and seeing the presentation and just knowing the things that I post. You know, look at the evidence of what's been left behind if you want to follow something. You know, I'm not going to get into who believes in what and who who instructs what, but if you look at what the Remets left behind, that's something that anyone would want to follow. I mean, an offering the king gives of bread, beer, and wine, and fowl, and, you know, everything that a nature needs to live, that's something that I would want to follow. You know, mm-hmm. so I just want to, I just wanted to add that to say that I get a lot of people who attack me about following Kemet and learning the, the methodology to break down and be able to transliterate text and learn how to read the glyphs or the teeth, as we said. Well, this is the thing, you know, I, I get the same thing, you know, and, and really uh, what you're describing, oh, let me get my cursor back here. What what you're what you are describing is something that a lot of people say. And basically it comes down to questions like, how is learning the language gonna put food on my table? How is learning the language gonna put money in my pocket? How is learning the language gonna help me feed my babies? And this and that. Why should I study a dead culture? It's dead. It's ancient. That's why they call it ancient Egypt. You know, it's dead. Nobody's speaking that language now, you know and so on and so forth and see people say that we just got to understand that people say it out of not because of what they know it's because of what they don't know and that is the root of what ignorance is ignorance means to to un, to not to know so these people are talking out of a place of ignorance and so it's our job to just educate them and enlighten them on on um on these different issues so that they can start to change that in their own mind. And, and, and also because it comes down to uh, literally we're the only ones that feel that way because a lot of other people around the world utilize the principles from ancient Kemet or the Nile Valley as a whole. And they're using them and they're successful with it. These other countries, these other people that are that are movers and shakers around the world are actually utilizing principles that we can find inside of Kemet. And the only way we know that is because we know the language now and we can read the text for ourselves and we can say, wait a minute, the ancient Egyptians or the Remish themselves had this principle that we're using today. The form of governments, the way the governments are ran, the hierarchies, the, the relationships of these different branches of governments and things and stuff. Um, there's a lot of things that were, are being done today that we see right there in ancient Kemet. One example is the actual scientific method that people use today in, in all of the scientific disciplines. That scientific method is, was codified in ancient Kemet written down, known, as, known, known collectively as tephesib, which is the correct method. But there are sub-steps, there are steps. The exact same steps that you find in a scientific method that every scientist use is found in the Nile Valley, codified right there thousands of years ago. And they're using science to advance civilizations today. But we're crazy, and we want to ignore that about Kemet and dog it and, and talk bad about people who want to take that route but yet we're still at the bottom receiving crumbs from people who actually took it, take advantage of it, took advantage of it and they're prosperous. So, so knowing all of that, it's just our job to, to educate people. We have to let people know of the greatness of Kemet, not in a romanticized way. And that's, and that's another thing 
that's what turns people off is because they feel like, okay, if you're dealing with Kemet, ah, oh, Kemet is in Hollywood. You know, I see the unk everywhere. Everybody has a tattoo of an unk or jewelry and this and that. I see the mummy movies um, and all this stuff. So they, 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 they look at it that there's a lot of romanticism go going on. And so we have to make that clear. We have to, we have to distinguish what we're doing from that stuff. And so we have to make that clear. So it's, 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 it's just a lot of work that we have to do, but uh, we just have to stay on top of it and, and continue, continue to do that. And, and by, you know, and I think we're doing a good job of doing it. And the more people that catch on, it's, gonna, it's just going to grow with, with this understanding, you know, not in terms of growth as, a, as us as a group, but just period, this understanding of ancient Kemet, you know, so we have people on both sides. So we have people who are, call themselves practitioners of Kemet or Kemetics, as they say, and they will make it a bad name because they're not doing things properly themselves. And then you have people on the other side of the fence that just dog everything uh, Kemet, you know? So, it, you know, it's just our job to uh, educate people on what's going on, what's good, you know? Um, because I, I mean, I get it all the time and see, like I, I hit it head on when I hear that or I see that or I see a comment on social media, Facebook or whatever. And people make those statements. You know, I, I deal with it straight on. You know, people say, well, what what's the point in studying. Ancient Kemet or the language is that going to put food on my plate on my plate? And I say, well, you type in that comment on Facebook, did that put money on your in your pocket or food on your table? No. So you obviously have spare time to make comments, but you don't have spare time to learn about. A, a an historical giant you know people don't people really don't understand what Kemet represents you know like like the other day i put a post up uh the difference between unity and confederacy because everybody is crying for unity 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 but they're not approaching it properly and so our model for unity is ancient Kemet because anybody who knows anything about Kemet even on a basic level they understand that Kemet was an amalgamation of different groups of people, different communities. And they were able to come together and stay together for approximately, give or take, 3,000 years. All right, United States is only what? Uh, how old is the United States as, as, a, as, a, as a, 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 a um, federation? How old that is? Huh? 400 and something. Okay, let's just say 400. I don't, I don't know the exact, but let's just it's round it to 400. More, but it's 400, and uh, about 400. It may be a little bit less than that. I, I'm, I'm averaging it out due to uh, 1619, but if you want to go to 17, 17, 1776, it ought to be roughly about 400. Okay, let's just round it to 400. So United States have, has, has been in the United States for 400 years. Kemet was uh, gelled together for 3,000 years. 3,000. Now, mind you, in today's time, it's way, way, way easier to stay unified. Why? Because we have the speed of communication. If there's any disgruntled, if there's any miscommunication problems, we could straighten it out because we could send an email, we could send a text message, we could send a telegraph, we could do this, we could travel, we could get in a plane and travel, we can do diplomatic relations and just go different places to talk things out. But imagine 4,000 miles of territory, which is approximately how long the Nile is, um, of territory of people who didn't have text messages, who didn't have the, the speed of any kind of communication, how were they able to keep it together that long? People can't even have a long distance relationship nowadays. And we got all this technology. So imagine people in the Nile Valley keeping it together for 3,000 years. You, you know, of course they had their bumps and bruises, but roughly 3,000 years. So that is a lesson in and of itself. So if we're crying for unity today, then let's go to the best role model for unity, which is ancient Kemet. Now, I did a post because I'm separating what unity is because unity is an organic thing. And that's, that's what I outlined in the post. Unity is the best example of unity would be the human body where you have different parts working together for the whole. And so, and that happens organically. But confederacy is, is a is based on an agreement. So, so this is what people are really talking about and asking for. So if, if I am me and I'm doing my thing, you are you and you're doing your thing, your thing and my thing are two totally different things, 
but yet we can come together to agree on a third thing to do. That is called a confederacy. And so this is what people are really striving for. And this is the approach that people should have. Because then that by approaching it this way, then you cut out trying to convert somebody to your thing. You're like, no, you stay what you are, but let's agree to do this. You know, I'm over here and I have my culture and my beliefs. You're over there. You have your culture and your beliefs. Fine. I'm not trying to convert you from your culture, but hey, let's come together and form an agreement to do this project. That's what people are really talking about. And businesses do it all the time. Microsoft and Apple came together and agreed to share technology, to, to share the platform of Microsoft Word. Now you have Microsoft Word for Windows, Microsoft Word for um, OS, OS X or whatever. That's what businesses do all the time. But is, is Microsoft going to convert to become Apple? No. Is Apple going to become Microsoft? No. That's a confederacy. So this is what I pointed out. And the uh, reason I'm saying this is because of what you said, uh, Jehudi Bach, is that when people try to dog people for studying Kemet, they, they're just ignorant. So we have to just educate people. Kemet represents the best role model for a lot of things, uh, good character, for unification, for, um, you know, then all of the sciences and math, architecture and things like that, that they contribute to the world, that people don't even realize it, you know. So it's it's a lot to it's a lot to learn. So it, it's just a matter of stay stay in the course and holding your hold you know holding fast to it, you know. But at the same time, if 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 it involves friends and loved ones, and you find that your friends and loved ones are starting to look at you sideways and stuff like that, then it's up to you to get creative and try to com communicate things to them in a creative way to where it doesn't cause friction. Now that's that's the challenge that we all have when it comes to people close to us. But outside of that, man, let them have it. You know what I mean? I mean, you know, I like I said, I see it all the time, and I just go straight straight in. <laughs> I but I use logic, you know. Yeah. So that's it. Somebody else yeah. has something to say. Yeah, that, 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 this is Kofi. Uh, yeah, I, um, I understand what uh, Jehudi Bach is talking about too. Um, um, it's just like you were saying, Sabre, uh, a lack of ignorance. And we just have to, um, you know, have to, um, you know, stay, stay steadfast, you know, and try to, you know, educate the, the ignorance, you know what I'm saying, those that are ignorant to the fact of those that don't know, they just, they only going by, they only being educated by Hollywood. They only being educated by what's on TV, what's, uh, what's on the, uh, what's on the news. I'm, um, doing a presentation tomorrow. And um, it's gonna be some ministers and preachers and stuff in there, and I'm I'm actually gonna be, you know, showing like what you're talking about how Egypt, um, how Egypt why why wouldn't we study, uh, Egypt? You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it, 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 that empire lasted for three thousand some say five thousand years, so that it is the longest empire that ever ruled. So why not study that empire and see? how this empire stayed a empire for you know, you know a thousand years when you only had empires for maybe a couple of you know maybe a couple of couple of years couple of years four or five six hundred years so i mean and the main thing that how Kemet stayed uh stayed in power was good character you know and 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 good character is 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 not only in Kemet but it's uh you know it's uh is everywhere. So um I'm in Mississippi. So it's the Bible Belt of the State, you know what I'm saying? And my dad's a minister. Um my mom's in the church and you know just about everybody around me in the church. And I just have found out creative ways uh um to communicate with them and get them to even understand certain things and show them certain things so they don't have a misconception of of uh, what Kemet is or what any African uh African system or any African civilization is because you know you you uh you know anytime you talk about African or African spirituality the first thing they talk about is voodoo or voodoo which people don't understand. I don't care what spiritual system um you know you talk about and they always talk about voodoo, 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 which they they ignorance of what 
um, you know, what uh, <clears throat> voodoo is. Voodoo is, it means spirit. And most of what voodoo, I mean, if you look at voodoo, voodoo or voodoo, or you look at um, um, uh, Yoruba, uh, 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 Ifa, Afa, some of those other systems, I mean, some of those same systems are patterned after uh, 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 excuse me, after killing. So it's, a, you know, so it's our duty to uh, educate them. And I'm, I'm going to be, I'm nervous, you know, for going in there tomorrow doing my presentation, but, you know, my my presentation is going to be based in, you know, based in facts. And, and I'm not going in there to convert anybody to anything, but just give them a, a, a better understanding of what, you know, uh, what is, what, what is African spirituality or what, what, what uh, a better, uh, uh, better understanding of what Kemet is, you know what I'm saying? But I'm not going to be talking about Kemet. I'm going to be talking about voodoo. I'm going to be talking about uh, uh, Ifa um, and a couple of other different uh, spiritual systems, you know what I'm saying? But the, the basics or the foundations um, come out of Kemet because most of those spiritual systems, if you look, um, most of those, well, are uh, dealing with the... Uh, the people with Vudam and Ifa, I know they said those people came from out of East East Africa into Kemet. And then they took what they learned out of Kemet and went into Benin or Dahomey, which is now Benin, and went into uh, Nigeria. You know, when you talk about Odu Oduwa, they say Odawa comes from out of, uh, uh, was actually a king. And he also, he comes from out of um, uh, Kemet and set up uh civilization and Eli Ifa, you know what I'm saying, with some of the things that he learned from um, out of Kemet. But anyway, it's just our duty, man, to, you know, to, to go in and, and, and educate those that are, uh, that does not have a, a understanding, man. And it's, it's, it's rough on me, man. I, I, I'm telling you, like I said, I'm, I'm in the Bible, but I'm in Mississippi, so I'm surrounded around people that are, that are, always, you know, looking at me. I'm the outcast, but, you know, I, I have a, a better way of, uh, I guess, uh, making people understand, um, you know, and, 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 and stop look. Well, I, yeah, the better way of making them, uh, um, I guess a better way of not making them look at me is I'm, I'm crazy. I done found out a technique on how to, uh, communicate with, uh, communicate, uh, um, um, with my family. You know, I just, if I could just add something <clears throat> that I've, I've been able to help some of my, my uh, Christian family with is number one, you got three central Bible characters that all, you know, went into ancient Kemet and found refuge and, and blessings. And that was Abraham and then Joseph and then also young Jesus. You know, if you're dealing with their mythology, sometimes it's good to let them know that. And then also in the book of Amos 9-7, it says, Are not you Israelites the same to me as the Cushites? So there obviously was a, a, very, um, a, a very synchronous connection that Kemet had um, with the people of the Bible. And... If people are going to follow the Bible as, you know, the word of God, they owe it to themselves to research as much as possible into the the background of the stories and even the place where the so-called Messiah um, went to for refuge and for safety. And so this is, this is something that I've pointed out. <clears throat> I was able to point this out to my sister when she started dating a, a brother who's a priest in the Ifa tradition. And, you know, three years later, they've got a beautiful marriage and she's let go of, of, of her Christian paradigm as I have. And now she's into the Ifa with my brother-in-law, Jasir. But it was because I, I was able to show her that it was a benefit to her to examine the roots of, of these uh, traditions that she she was raised with like I was. And a lot of times people don't want to research the roots. They're just happy with the, the leaves and the branches, but they're not really trying to get down into the roots of a situation. And, you know, that's, that's 
that's what I feel like we can be logically, and especially with this modality right here. Like I said, the fact that the pseudoscience is cut out of it, uh, it's just baffling to me that this isn't taught in every university and school because it's it should be. Yeah, and those are the challenges we we, we all faced, you know. Um, and we just have to overcome those challenges, you know. Uh, can y'all still hear me? Cheers, Cheers to you. Okay. Yeah. So um, those those are just challenges we have to overcome, and we have to get creative. And and you know, kind of takes experience, uh, trial and error, you know, uh, with that in order to how to communicate different things to different people. Um, so, you know. From my experience, we can't we can't convert somebody um, ourselves. They have to convert themselves, and this is a natural thing. And this is another thing that that Kemet is good for is the psychology, the application, the psycho application of 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 the information or the um, literature and the culture of Kemet to our psyche, a psychology. You know um, how the mind works and things like that, because we know that. Um, Whenever somebody is, quote unquote, set in their ways, anything new that they feel is forcing them to change those ways, they rebel. And this is a natural occurrence in just uh, human beings, period. And so the way that we learn is through what they will call trance. And there's different levels of trance. Like when we're in school and we're learning things, we actually go into to trance to learn because you have to bypass that stubbornness of the will and you know the will has to be free it doesn't like to be coerced into anything and when you're teaching somebody or you're trying to convince somebody you're actually coercing them and if they think you're co coercing them the more they think you're coercing them the more they're going to resist so so we have to create a a uh, a fake trance state for those people and in order to do that, you have to be creative and figure out ways to tell them the same thing that doesn't that doesn't uh, trigger their rebellious buttons, their rebellion buttons. And that's a challenge for all of us. So everybody has different uh, people that they deal with and stuff like that. So, you know, in my experiences, you know, I, I've been I, that's what I've dealt with for a very long time. And, you know, I figure out quick ways to to get information off to people, you know. And whatnot so everybody has just had to learn their way through that you know so but but to to address you know i just kind of want to go back again to the to the importance of understanding egypt or the relevance of egypt is not to romanticize it because egypt had its um ups and downs you know it had its good and its bad you know the good the bad and the ugly but the preponderance of what egypt can provide us greatly outweighs anything that we could say bad about it bad was there but the good of it is so good that everybody in the world takes a bite out of it everybody from the occult theosophy to the uh brotherhoods that are out here to the governments that are out here and to other cultures who have taken things mutated it and devised their own systems based on off of something rooted in Africa as a whole and Kemet specifically. So other people are doing it. We just got to recognize for what it is and make use of it. So I, I think our approach is the best approach because it's through the language. That way we don't have to romanticize anything. You know, we don't have to get into this uh, back and forth silly debates either because a lot of people who are debating will have something bad, bad or any opinions about Kemet. They don't know about Kemet. They're talking while learning, you know, there's a, you know, you know, there's a, there's a thing in initiate, initiate, initiatics, um, systems where you're silent. You're, you're not supposed to talk until you're competent enough to talk, you know? And so what people are doing is while they're learning this or that, they're doing all this talking. It's supposed to be other, other way around, learn more, less talking, you know? So. Anyway, like I said, I don't want to drag this drag this out. It's uh ten twenty one. I know people are um 
well, I mean, other people are, are watching the are watching the game and everything like that. But we've been on for a while because actually we started early. You know, I, I tried to start early so that we could end end early. You know, usually we, we start at nine o'clock and go till eleven. But I think we can wrap it up. Um, wrap it up now. It'd be a good time. So unless somebody has anything else to say, I think we can um, close out. And usually we we give that uh, opportunity to our uh, Sonnet Emiket can take us on home. <clears throat> all right, all right. Dua. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, just wanted to um, say, um, Dua, thank you for you know the the class members that um joined us today. I think they did um they did really really great. Those um Iker. And um, obviously, I, I guess we've heard a lot of whispers about, you know, how excellent they are. And I think um, <laughs> today they kind of, you know, they did prove that. So, you know, really looking forward to see, you know, what, what is, you know, they're going to be doing in the future. I know they're about to do the exams and all that. So, um, yeah, that was, um, that was wonderful. And uh, Dua, once again, you know, um, gracing our Freestyle Friday tonight. So, um, other than that, um, as has been discussed the uh, classes um and uh, new upcoming classes so um if you haven't joined yet um do join the you know um you can sign up on the website which is um um medunature.com mdw-ntr and um yeah you can go in there under courses and um sign up um there's a book you can buy and um you know it can use it as a self-study otherwise the interactive classes are very very beneficial i guess as you've heard from the other our members who just um finished the classes so i would definitely recommend that and um you know again um it's you know you're not limited by the location as we've seen with brother colors i think actually brother colors you you know your french uh, you, you speak good french and i think your english as well is um definitely <laughs> excellent so you don't need any disclaimers when you speak so you know i think that's really great and uh, also on his time zone so if you're also in other areas you know london um whatever anywhere in europe africa we definitely encourage you if you're watching to um enroll in the classes the online classes i mean you can you know you can do that anywhere so um definitely do that and um also um it is a co-ed group so uh you know uh for the sushuma animated nature for those who would like to join after they finish the classes you know in, uh, of the ladies out there you know don't feel discouraged um you know you're definitely welcome so i would suggest i would encourage um you all to you know uh, take the classes and um yeah then you know at least i can have some company here <laughs> in here not that i'm bored or anything like that but yeah that would be great so I'd definitely encourage but um other than that i don't want to uh, turn into <laughs> see islands i would like to say uh do I, and um if you haven't subscribed yet um subscribe to our youtube page share our uh, our uh, videos to anybody that you feel might need it you know do share and um yeah um you know click on the bell so that you can you know let you know when we are live and um, if you haven't joined the group page do that that's the shuma animated nature on facebook join that uh, join the group page as well and uh, with that i like to say um get an affair which is good night or bacon affair which is good morning to those in the morning time and um shame and go in peace <laughs>